welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, we have a, a great presentation um, for you. And before we get started, I would love to introduce a couple of people on the call with us today. Um, I'm going to start with Gabrielle Strum, who you'll see around campus. Um, she is the new, uh, she is going to be doing a lot of work with One Planet Living, um, organizing a lot of events, helping you with One Planet clubs, um, learning about the curriculum, helping with the curriculum. She's going to be there for the year. Um, please, if you see her around campus, go say hi, give her a big warm welcome. Um, she is a Climate Corps Fellow, um, which is something that you can all look into and ask her about. It's a great opportunity for you to get into this work once you graduate from university. Um, so it's a great way to get your foot in the door and to keep, to keep um, this work alive. So, so uh, give our big warm welcomes when you see her on campus. And uh, we're really happy to have you with the Credo team. So um, I'll start there. Um, next, I would like to introduce Sam. Um, Sam Morgan Picard is, um, we're going to be learning about the One Planet portfolio today. And Sam is pulling all the strings behind the scenes. So she's working with the developers and she's working with me. She is the head of programs and operations. I think, did I get that right, Sam? Um, for One Planet Living. And she really is, is working magic to make all of this come together and um, operate smoothly for you all. So I just wanted to, to show you who, who's behind the scenes and really helping, helping this development. And next I'll introduce Poren. Poren Desai is um, the founder and CEO of OnePlanet.com. And he also is, is the one making all of this happen. So there's a, there's a team of us that are trying to um, pull this together and help give you a platform to showcase all of the work that you're doing to help make the world a better and more sustainable, happier, healthier place. So Poran's work, working with students, um, with youth, he's working with companies, he's working with cities, city planners, um, he's working with scientists um, and politicians, and he's here today to share a little bit about um, some of the work he's doing and why today is a critical moment to be doing this work. Um, and then we'll go on to learning a little bit more about your One Planet portfolios, and we have our three ambassadors, Credo grads, here on the call to share their journey as One Planet students, um, how they became One Planet ambassadors. Um, and you'll get to see their live timelines in action. So that's a little bit about our call, our agenda. Um, I'm gonna pass it off to Poren to start us off with a short introduction to what he's doing right now. Yeah, thank you, Marika. Uh, you know, it's a, a real pleasure uh, to be with you, with all of you here. And, and Credo is my favorite school in the world. <laughs> so uh, uh, I, I absolutely love working with, with everyone at Credo, including, uh, you know, including the students. Um, so One Planet Living, how can we lead happy, healthy lives uh, within the resources uh, we have available on our planet? And we are consuming more resources um, than the planet can sustain. And um, uh, I think a lot of you will know that uh, if we all, if everyone on Earth consumed as much as the average European, we'd need three planets worth of resources. If we all live like Americans, uh, we'd need five planets. Um, so the challenge is very clear. We can't do that indefinitely. And, um, uh, uh, you know, what's happened in the last few months with the extreme climate um, uh, events around the world. So extreme weather events, uh, of course, uh, it's been in um, West Coast America, uh, you know, with the, the very hot weather um, uh, three months ago, then we've seen Europe has had its hottest ever uh, recorded uh, temperature, probably. Um, we've had floods in Germany, unprecedented amount of rain. Um, uh, and then more recently with, uh, of course, Hurricane Ida, and then uh, um, what happened in, in New York with those sorts of flooding. Um, so, so we really have entered a new uh, era now, which is, uh, which is really quite uh, frightening in the sense that scientists now believe um, that uh, climate changes are happening much faster than they, than they thought. And in fact, they're happening about 70 years 
earlier than they were predicting. Um, so that's a very worrying um, trend, of course. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, it makes it even more important that all of us uh, start uh, contributing uh, to, uh, uh, to creating a better world and regenerating the living systems uh, on which we depend. Uh, and we depend on the rest of life on Earth for the air that we breathe, the water that we drink, the soils that we need uh, uh, to grow our food. So we have to see ourselves again as part of nature and make sure uh, um, that we're looking after um, uh, those systems. Um, but the situation is very serious now. Um, uh, you know, we are in a climate and ecological emergency. Uh, what's really worrying the scientists at the moment is uh, what's known as tipping cascades, which means that when one particular ecosystem uh, collapses, and we're seeing that in various parts of the world, it actually has a domino effect. And we see then, um, uh, you know, collapse of many more systems. So um, I'm doing some work with some leading scientists, including our um, uh, uh, um, uh, our former, um, the, um, the UK's former chief scientific officer, uh, who's a, a, a leader in the climate space. Uh, we're creating a film with him uh, together with another professor called Professor Kevin Anderson, who's Greta Thunberg's advisor on climate. And I think you're all familiar with uh, the great work that Greta's been doing. And also Dr. Alice Hill, who was uh, President Obama's advisor on resilience. So looking at how um, uh, communities can become more resilient to the impacts of not only climate, but also other things like uh, uh, pandemics. Uh, and with uh, Salim Huck, who is a, uh, uh, a Bangladeshi expert, uh, so from Bangladesh, which is a very low-lying country, so prone to a lot of um, uh, uh, flooding. Uh, but they've responded very well and started to adapt uh, to climate change uh, so that uh, um, uh, people are uh, evacuated very quickly at the first sign of uh, a danger of flooding. And they're now advising the German government on, on how they might become more resilient and uh, uh, create a, a culture where people are aware of climate change and able to respond to it. So we're producing this three minute film, which we're going to show at the um, uh, um, uh, um, at the United Nations Climate Conference called COP26, which is coming up um, at the beginning of November. Many people are saying it's the most important uh, meeting humanity has ever had because we have to uh, adapt very rapidly now to um, the impacts of climate change, make ourselves resilient, but do it in a way which also regenerates the living systems of planet Earth. So our film's going to be called Adapt and Regenerate, um, and it's going to be a call to action um, uh, for um, cities, for companies, for citizens to all start collaborating um, so that we can, um, uh, you know, we can survive and thrive uh, through the challenges um, uh, ahead of us. So uh, I'm really keen to uh, um, uh, you know, hear again how uh, the, the, the One Planet ambassadors are responding to that challenge, what they learned through using the One Planet portfolios. Um, and I always tell it, you know, everyone in 30 years of working in sustainability, it was hearing these One Planet ambassadors and how they were taking the challenges which we all face and, um, uh, uh, you know, coming up with really, really positive responses. So feeling that actually we've got a great opportunity ahead of us to, uh, to create the world that we need and we want. So I'm really looking forward to this session. Thank you, Poren. Um, Poren's told me that if there is not huge, major changes to our lifestyle, if we do not really start to take climate change seriously in our life and stop living in a fantasy after this conference, this meeting, uh, important meeting for humanity, um, happening the first week, first week, 12 days in November, um, he is going to throw in the towel and become a seaweed farmer. So um, let's all hope that, I mean, I think seaweed farming is really fantastic, but um, we need you doing the work that you're doing, Poren, and being our leader in this One Planet Living vision. So let's hope we can really take this seriously and make some huge changes in our, in our lives. All right. We have the pleasure of having on the call with us today, Satchel, Molly, and Katrina, and, and Katrina who, are, who are One Planet graduates. 
um, graduated last year and have recently um, spread their wings and flown to colleges. Molly is, is, has just landed in uh, San Diego and she is going to UC San Diego. Katrina is in Berkeley. She is nearly a month into college um, at UC Berkeley and Satchel is on the East Coast at Olin College of Engineering. So um, here's a picture of them in a Credo classroom wearing a Credo shirt, having done a sustainable food challenge where I believe they actually had to dumpster dive to get ingredients to um, produce a delicious meal, which we then all enjoyed pre-COVID times, obviously. Um, but we're really grateful that they are taking time out of their busy new lives um, in their new locations to join us for this call. Your world saving work can all be collected on this One Planet portfolio. The One Planet portfolio is a place where you collect all of your world saving work. And it can be so many different types of work. It can be um, essays, it can be poems, it can be videos, as you can see right here. It's not just what you're doing in school, it's also what you're doing outside of school in your free time. You can kind of think as your, of your One Planet portfolio as a cross between LinkedIn and your Instagram account. It's a place where you collect all of the pieces of work you are most proud of and that you would love to showcase um, to colleges perhaps or to future employers. For me, if I think about your portfolios, I have hope that we can build a world where everybody would have a world-saving resume. And that is what we are trying to build towards through um, developing this platform of the One Planet portfolio. You can see different examples of what students have submitted onto their One Planet portfolio here. So you could um, perhaps go on a field trip to a to the recycling center and and learn what happens to recycling once you put it in the recycling bin and make a short film about that you can put that onto your timeline perhaps you attend a training um, or go to a conference you can take a quick picture write a summary put that on your timeline um, there's many different events that happen on the school campus um, from zero waste winter fairs to fund runs to climate action to to climate walkouts, um, all of that can be put onto your portfolio. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a place where you can collect all of these different things that you're, that you're doing and that, you're, that you will be researching over the next four years of, of high school, three or four years if you're in 10th grade, and then be able to look back and reflect on this journey because sometimes we feel like all of these tiny little pieces that we do are not making a big enough difference. But if we have a place where we can collect it all in one space and look back over it over four years, you'll realize that actually you know a lot and you've done a lot and you are making a great con contribution towards a better world. Um, so Katrina, do you wanna share a little bit about how that journey has been for you? Yeah, for sure. So um, when I was applying to colleges, you're supposed to write essays and explain what you want to do with your life and I was like I have no idea but you have to do that to get into colleges so for me I looked at everything I'd done throughout high school and what I thought would be the most valuable thing for me to study and for me to major in was something having to do with the environment because even if I don't go into a career specifically geared toward that toward that um, I think that everybody in every career should be conscious and should know and be educated on environmental issues and also should be trying to make a change within their perspective field. Um, so I'm studying society and environment um, at UC Berkeley under the Rosser College of Natural Resources. Um, and I didn't choose that, like I said, because I'm specifically interested in environmental career. I may, but I may become a doctor. I may do, become a coach. But within those careers, I plan to try to change those fields to be more environmental, environmentally sound because I think that if we actually want to make a change and make sustainable change and change this world, we have to have everybody. And that doesn't just mean being inclusive. It means everyone has to be locked in because the scope of the problem we're facing is much bigger than one aspect of society. And so if we 
are able to start everyone in high school, if you're able to start in high school, seeing how all these different little actions contribute to environmental work, even if it's, if it's something you're interested in outside of that isn't obviously environmental, you're gonna be able to see in whatever career you're interested in, oh, this is affecting the climate in a net positive or net negative way. Um, so that in the future, you can make changes within that career, because we need all aspects of society to be able to uh, make a greater difference and actually create, make the earth habitable for, habitable for humans again. Thank you, Katrina. Yeah, it's, a, it's definitely something that we need to think about um, in every discipline that we're studying, because every discipline needs some major rethink and redesign. So um, I know 10th grade, you're going to be looking a lot at innovation next week. So um, you can really start to think about how you bring the perspective of sustainability into um, whatever it is that you're looking at. There's a UN report out that says by 2030, we'll be looking at 24 million new jobs in sustainability. So this is helping set you up to have something to show that you have this experience to go into those fields and to get those jobs. Um, so we're, we're trying to give you a platform to showcase that work. So how do you become a One Planet Scholar? If you submit one piece of work per principle into your portfolio, then you can apply to become a One Planet Scholar and graduate with your scholar seal uh, um, either on your graduation certificate or as a separate, um, as a separate uh, certificate. Um, that means 10 pieces of work in total, obviously, and you'll also be needing to complete a cover letter um, and that's a reflection for what you have learned through doing this work and how you have changed and how these principles have integrated themselves into your life and into your way of thinking about the world. If you go above and beyond, then you can graduate as a One Planet ambassador. And that's who we have on the call today. We have three One Planet ambassadors. They have 30 pieces of work submitted onto their portfolio. They've completed their cover letter and done 200 hours of volunteer work. And obviously ambassadors go above and beyond and show up for presentations like this and help inspire the next generation to start their portfolios and to join this work and this effort towards creating a better world. So Satchel and Molly, if you wanna share a little bit about how you have used your portfolio to help get you where you are today. Yeah, so um, I feel like all the work I've done so far has actually really prepared me for where, what I want to do, where, I, where I've gone into. Um, and actually, when I did get accepted into my college, I got a handwritten letter from the president um, uh, that was sent to my home. I actually missed it, sadly, because I left the day before I got there. But I got a handwritten letter, and she was just telling me how she appreciated um, a lot of what I put on my resume, what I submitted um, in my application to the college, and what it meant for her to be accepting um, kids who have this appreciation for what it means to be sustainable, um, who understands what kind of situation we're in. And so not only does, you know, how did this help me get to the school I'm in, um, it's also actually given me a good background in a lot of the classes I'm taking right now. Um, one of them is design nature. Um, so biomimicry, which is actually a class you guys will probably take your senior year um, and one of the more sustainable classes in the Credo curriculum has actually given me a large background in a lot of the um, assignments and coursework I need to do, um, as well as uh, mod sim, which is like modulation and simulation of the physical world. Um, so currently we're tracking what it's gonna be like, what, uh, how carbon emissions are gonna continue to rise depending on different outcomes. And so how are you going to create computer systems to regulate and to adjust for what's gonna happen um, in the future? Just kind of trying to um, estimate where we're going to be like in 30 years, 40 years. And of course, it's not as um, uh, appropriate to really look at it as, as a professional is, but like learning that process of, okay, this is the steps you have to go through. It's really nice to have that background of understanding where these concepts are coming from. You know, it's not just about cars. There's so many other aspects that are um, influencing carbon emissions. 
Uh, it's also been really um, influential in the way that I approach classwork and classes in general. So when I first started doing um, credo courses, I was just like, okay, here, I'm here to get my grade. I'm here to do this. But then once I started thinking about one planet and actually applying it to my life, I could see how it started to spread out and there's connections everywhere. And so now that I'm, I, that it kind of gave me this background and this um, very networking way of thinking, it's actually helped me connect my classes and how does this class relate to this? And even though you get taught separate subjects, they're actually all very much um, influential on one, one another. And so just seeing and relating um, different concepts has really been super helpful. And you know, there's, you get more out of it than a portfolio. There's a lot of, of learning experience. There's a lot of knowledge. There's a lot of appreciation for the complexities of, um, that comes with life in general. No, I agree with everything Satchel said. So I took the portfolio and everything a completely different path. Um, so it did help me get into my college. I'm at UC San Diego. And here we have like Hogwarts houses and my like Hogwarts house or, house or my college is called Seventh College. And it's like tagline is called a changing planet. So all of my general ed requirements are targeted towards climate change and just learning how to evolve with it. And so I absolutely believe my One Planet portfolio sort of helped land me in my college where I am now. But beyond that, so a lot of this all sounds like science stuff. And when I first started doing One Planet, I'm like, this is very much science. This is very much like that kind of stuff. I'm a theater major. I sing and I dance. I, I don't do science that much. I'm not a STEM person, but it's, it's still coming up in every aspect of my life. Like, Storytelling is one of the universal languages. And so this needs to also be brought into storytelling and the things we're seeing on screen and what we're seeing on stage. And so I think the one having the broad perspective of how everything is interconnected with each one planet principle, like they're 10 principles, but they each cover so many different things and they overlap in so many different ways. And so having that groundwork, I feel like I can tell each story that I choose to tell in my career in my future, I'm gonna find some way to center it with the earth we're living on or like the reality we live in. And so I really think it does have this ripple effect that you don't realize until like, it's almost five years since I was introduced to One Planet. And I'm like, whoa, I had no idea how impactful this would be throughout everything I do. But so even if like you're hesitant and you're like sitting there and you're like, um, I'm not into the math thing, science, not my, not my cup of tea look at it and find your own perspective of doing it because everyone has a different way of taking this into their life and it impacts you no matter what. So don't write it off just because it sounds like science stuff, but um, you can make it your own in any way possible. Yeah, we've had some students um, in the past that have shared their portfolios with colleges and their applications and they have received um, financial help with tuition too. So we've had some students that um, have received between $8,000 and $15,000 in scholarship money towards their tuition. Um, so it can really help, help you um, gain recognition, showcase the work you're doing and um, help you on your way. Um, if this is, this, this is something that we really all need to be thinking about at this point. Um, at this point, we really don't have a choice um, with what the future is going to have in store for us. So embracing that and, and finding your path is, is where we're at right now in the world. And um, we hope that this, this portfolio helps you with that. So um, all of the ninth grade pretty much have signed up to start your One Planet portfolio. You can visit oneplanet.education to get to the website and then click to start your portfolio. Um, we'll be alerted that you are interested in your starting your portfolio. We will send you a youth safeguarding form to fill out. Once you have filled that out, you'll be sent an invitation to um, get started, to create your profile and to create and to start submitting pieces of work onto your portfolio, onto your timeline. So we are going to jump into showing you what some of these timelines look like. Um, we're going to start with Satchel. Very good. Okay, awesome. So um, one, uh, one of the things that, you know, sorry, 
here's your basically basically here's your portfolio your timeline um and how it works is you're gonna have a timestamp right here um around where what time you posted it over here is going to be the uh general principle it's under and then below that is the type of um submission so right this one for example was a presentation or a project there's also videos this one was volunteer work and just for some examples some things i did um, like I said, I'm going into engineering. So one of my favorite ones that I did was a research paper and it was basically discussing the implications of implementing an electric train system throughout the United States, trying to move from, you know, a uh, singular car carbon based to a more electric style. And so it wasn't just talking about though, oh, you know, here's so many good things about an electric train being a part of it uh being in one planet it's also looking at what are the side effects what's the ne what's the negative part who is it going to impact um you know socially is it going to impact different groups more than others is it going to treat marginalized people in different ways and so it's kind of one planet isn't just about what's the technology that's going to save us it's really about what are the systems in place that need to be changed and how does it affect everyone and just to kind of go with that, even though I'm a STEM guy, one of my other favorite ones was a um, podcast, which was, there you go. It was based on health and happiness. It was an immigration policies podcast discussing uh, in two parts, what it means to be an immigrant in the United States. Um, the first part was discussing historical aspects, you know, what it meant to be in the 1800s coming over, not being considered a full citizen. And then also what does it mean now, still being an immigrant coming over having to get a green card, having to worry about so many different things that being a citizen here doesn't have to mean. And so for me, even though this wasn't a tech thing, even though this wasn't a tech, you know, something about math or science, I was really passionate about this. And I think that's one of the beautiful things about having this portfolio is it lets you explore things you're interested in. It gives you that freedom to be like, oh, I'm really into this right now. Let me just go check it out, you know, do a project on it. It doesn't have to be amazing. You can literally just explore a few things, be like, this is what I learned, throw it in there. And if the motivation takes you and you wanna, you know, take a three month project and you really wanna go deep, di uh, deep dive into what you're talking about, that's also a possibility as well. And so I just want to give, you know, show these as examples that it doesn't have to be one set of things. It doesn't have to be, oh, I'm a tech person. I'm only gonna talk about technology or I'm a social activist. I'm only gonna talk about how these, how these affect different people. And so I think that in total, it's really important to realize how they all affect everything at once um, and just taking your time and appreciating everything you can do. Um, you know, submit papers, submit uh, volunteer work, submit videos, images, whatever you want, um, be creative. And I think that was one of the biggest takeaways I had from making this, um, timeline yeah there's lots of diversity on your timeline that's what we're looking for we don't just want to educate your head or heads or learn what your heads are thinking we want to know what your hands are doing and what your heart is feeling um so there's room for everything on your portfolio um katrina do you want to take us into your timeline so this right here is the uh general timeline of our entire one planet class, the class of 2021, one planet class. So you can, on here, you can look at what other people, other classmates have posted and get inspired um, to do your own work and see the cool things they've done. So you can see other people's papers or beach cleanups, things like that. Um, and you can also, if you wanna learn more about the one planet principles, the different principles, you can, uh, on the right side of the screen, you'll see these and you can, educate yourself on that as you try to figure out different projects you're going to do or different ways to incorporate into your life. Um, and then over here is what it looks like on the back end um, for your own portfolio. Um, so for me, I, an example here is I hosted during the 2020 election, I hosted a lot of different phone banks to register voters. Um, and I was motivated to do it because of the work I'd done with One Planet because I wanted to support a candidate that was going to put uh, do good work for the climate. Um, and it was really cool because you talked to a lot of different people, uh, people telling you to, you know, they they were not supporting the candidate you were supporting and people who were thanking you for your work. Um, and you got to gain a lot of perspective about uh, different views on climate change and different 
people's um, thoughts, even if they were supporting a different candidate, they were still affected by the climate um, and different in, gain insight into humanity. And uh, that was a cool experience for me. I did it in my senior year as a sum end to my journey with one, or not end, but as a sum at the end of high school, having done a lot of environmental work. Um, another thing was, uh, this was kind of funny. I wrote a paper five months before COVID about the Black Death, about the global pandemic back in the medieval ages and its connections with climate change um, and how interconnected interconnectivity and single-mindedness had led to both different threats to humanity. Um, but at the time, I was really dug into the thought that a pandemic could never happen again and that we had evolved as a society. Um, and so it was really interesting when I was compiling my portfolio to go back and read that paper and see my thoughts then, but also see how the arguments I had made that we were at a point in society where we were at another self-destructive point um, with a lot of the same factors had led to COVID as well. Um, and a little lighter thing I did was I'm a basketball player and during COVID I needed someone to play against. And so once my family got sick of doing it, I was going to buy, they have these defender people you can buy. It's like a made of foam thing. And instead of doing that, because I incorporated one plant into every part of my life, I decided to use some recycled materials I found around my yard to make um, my own defender like that. Um, and lastly, right here, um, I'm someone who, when I look at climate change, I like to find solutions. I like to study policy. I like to write papers and research. Um, but for photography class at Credo, I did a project about appreciating the hidden details in nature and kind of the fleetingness of it. Um, and so, for example, right here, this is a tree that was charred by wildfire. And you can see the, the green grass coming back through and showing the uh, regrowth. And so being able to do a project like that, I did it because of my portfolio. I focused on something around nature because of my portfolio. And that helped me to have a lot of hope. And so the portfolio allows you to look at every project you do for school, every project you do outside of school and try to connect it in some way. And then you see all these connections come through. Um, so for example, over here, I did a project for a research paper, which is a class some of you may take at Credo. Um, I'm interested in sports medicine. And so I did mine about chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which is a disease that football players get from repeated head injuries. When you look at that on the surface, you wouldn't necessarily think it has anything to do with one planet. Um, but what I noticed was a lot of the different societal and cultural uh, factors that were leading to this unsustainable environment for football players um, were a lot of the same factors that we see creating climate change. Um, and that, so that helped me to see these connections that we have all these systems in the world um, that create a human, a society that has created climate change. Um, and that's what I'm studying in college is, is the different systems and how they, we can change all of them in order to fix climate change. Um, and I don't think I would have been able to see those connections without the portfolio because every piece of work I've done throughout high school, I went through and looked at them and noticed every single one actually does re relate to one planet, which you wouldn't necessarily expect, but for every class, you can find connections. For every paper you write, you can find connections um, because everything is related and that's how we've gotten to where we are now. And so I think that's how we can get away from it as well. Awesome. Thanks, Katrina. I, when you all share your portfolios, I always learn so much. You always touch on something that you didn't touch on before and I'm grateful for that. Always learn, learn from you all. Um, Molly, last but not least, do you want to bring your portfolio up and share with screen? So this is my portfolio. This is just like where you land. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is so when you're entering something into the portfolio, you get to choose uh, a principle you want it to go under. Um, and right now you can only choose one, but I think you're going to be able to choose more in the future, maybe. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to like jump around because I don't want you guys to see the scrolling screen. But so one of the first things I put in my portfolio was um, from ninth grade, the first class you take at Credo, which is the climate change main lesson. And I don't know if you guys still do this assignment, but we did an assignment on the story of stuff and tracking how things like production, transportation, waste in its life cycle, basically. And so we wrote a 
paper on that. And that was the first thing I ever put into my One Planet portfolio. So that's a beautiful thing about the Credo curriculum, at least, is a lot of the things are in line with principles. So it's not always having to do this project you go and find yourself. Other things that are fun you can put in are like climate walkouts. Credo's a big school about, or Credo's big on standing up for what you believe in and speaking out, up about it. And so if you go on a climate walk or a gun violence protest, you can put that in. Um, also trash and fashion show, hopefully we'll be back at Credo sometime in the future. Um, it's a great opportunity, it's fun, and it truly like hands-on experience, really looking at how much we throw away. Great thing to put in your portfolio. Then there are also like bigger things. Um, Satchel mentioned the biomimicry project. I put mine in as well, and I did a whole project on designing a mental health system based off how a forest grows and with different layers of support and created a short film about that. And so it's, you can put a lot of things in and it doesn't have to be this huge major thing each time. It can be a small, beautiful thing that you just wrote a poem about in poetics or something like that. So also in the portfolio, you have something called a cover letter, which is on this top bar. And so you write a little bit about yourself. So I wrote like where I grew up, my like history. So sort of what defines you and a little bit about your perspective that you're bringing to these things. And then like your experience. So I wrote about what I did at Credo, my involvement with One Planet, with um, planning dances and that kinds of things. And then also your vision for the world. So like my main vision, like the, my first sentence is my vision for the world, my vision is for a world where love is the guiding force. Simple, and then I elaborated on that a little bit, but that just helps sort of sum up your viewpoint so that the reader like has a little bit of perspective about you. So it's a great place to start um, when someone's looking at your thing. And then what's beautiful about this is you have a link to your portfolio that you can share with anyone. And that's how we submitted it to colleges and things like that. I'm gonna stop sharing and touch on one more thing. We've all sort of mentioned this like ripple effect. You know how like when you draw a water, a drop of water drops in a lake, it ripples out and spreads. The one kind of portfolio is truly that first drop of water that makes you look at everything else in your life. Like, it, it went beyond me, it touched my family. My sister, who is a 10th grader at Credo this year, her name is Tallulah, I have to shout her out. She is more into one planet in the eco mindset than I am. And that's saying something, if, you see, if she sees someone with a plastic bag, you better run the other direction because she is coming for you. But um, it truly affects everyone around you in little shifts that like create a domino effect. And it truly is something that if you start small, you can get somewhere. So don't, don't, it might just be, oh, today I'm not going to use a plastic bag at the grocery, but that little choice can slowly create a larger and larger ripple. So yeah. Thanks, Molly. A great, great way to end. And I think sometimes we just get into a mindset where there's so many things that we hear about in the news and it's just negative. One negative leads to another negative and we can downward spiral. But what we're hoping to hoping to empower you to do is to bring one little positive solution that connects to another little one and let's start um, our upward spirals um, towards really creating solutions for a better world. So um, let's give our, our One Planet ambassadors a round of applause because that was pretty amazing. I hope you were all as blown away as I was. So I'm sitting here clapping by myself in my room, but I'm hoping you're all clapping for them. Um, yeah, thank you so much for sharing, for sharing your portfolios. Um, we have a little bit of time for questions. Um, if you want to share your questions with um, Mr. Schaefer um, or Mr. O or any of the other teachers. Um, on Satchel's, I think that's his name, his uh, One Planet Living portfolio, there was like something about like water wheels that that was interesting, like if he could explain that project. Nice. <laughs> Great. Yeah, um, so that was one of the biomimicry um, course projects. And so the goal for that one was it was kind of a um, it was kind of a prep project for what was going to be the uh, finishing project. And so it was just basically taking some type of animal um, and modeling a physical aspect about it that could potentially be more efficient um, 
than a modern version. And so what I decided to do is I was like, okay, what's what's a type what's a power source that is considered regenerative and so we take i was looking at hydropower and what um, type of technology is used and currently unfortunately even though hydropower is really beneficial in many ways there's a lot of aspects about it that need to be changed and so i was looking at one way to make it more efficient and that was the um, actual turbines and so what i did is i modeled it after a um a lobster tail um, so even though it didn't have as many um, uh, turbines as I had hoped, the idea was that I would compare the scoop shape of a lobster tail versus a flat plate. Um, and then, and actually I couldn't fully uh, calculate the actual ratio of which one was more efficient, but if you slow down the video and counted per seconds, you got about like one extra rotation in for every three seconds. Um, which, you know, doesn't seem like a lot on a small scale, but on like the big scale, when you're putting it into a big uh, hydro uh, powered uh, generator, it actually can get you a lot of extra energy and electricity out of it. So yeah, that was, that was the, um, that project for me. Um, that being said though, I did, I went really overkill. I'm just like, that's one of the ones where I was like, I am really interested in this. I'm gonna like do a lot um, just because it interested me. Uh, there's a lot of other ones that I've done that were kind of like, you know, it didn't take that long. Well, do you want to talk about um, if it's extra work or not? Because that's a frequently question that everybody asks. How much extra work is this on top of all the work that you have? Oh, wait, do we have a question or no? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so I think we've all sort of touched on this fact that like, it's not a lot of extra work because you're the, the purpose of it is to try to, try to find the connections in your current life. It's not designed or it can be one where you're like, oh, this is a cool idea. I wanna go off and find this like satchel in the lobster tail water wheel. But it's also, you're trying to find the connections in your current life and in the situation in which you live and how you can evolve from that. So no, it's not a lot of extra work and it is totally what you make it. Like you could do a portfolio just of the mandatory assignments you have at Credo. So like you have to do them anyway, as much as you might not want to, you have to do it to pass the class. So take that work, all that effort you put in, all the hours of homework, all the drawing, and put it into your beautiful portfolio. So no, it does not have to be a lot of extra work if you don't want it to be. Great. Okay, Porin, I think we're good to, to wrap up with some closing comments. Yeah, I just want to say how inspiring it, um, you know, is to listen to uh, Katrina, Satchel, and Molly, and uh, you know they are true ambassadors, uh, uh, and so amazing. And 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 I love what they were talking about. Um, it, you know, for example, the interconnectedness of things that everything is interconnected, and I think that's something that we don't really study enough. That actually. Um, everything in the universe is interconnected. So um, uh, if we can understand that, we will see that actually, uh, you know, looking after, um, you know, our planet is actually looking after ourselves. Um, and I love the way, um, uh, um, uh, um, you know, Molly was saying, for example, how it's not just about science. Um, you know, it's about arts, it's about dance, it's about poetry. All of that can help us lead a one planet life. Um, uh, um, you know, so, uh, and, and as uh, Katrina was saying, um, uh, you know, any subject you study, uh, um, uh, you, you can bring that understanding, that knowledge, um, any profession you go into, into um, helping create a one planet future. Uh, and I just loved um, uh, Satchel's uh, uh, project on, on the lobster tail. I think that's absolutely brilliant, you know, bringing together, uh, you know, the living world, uh, learning from nature and using uh, and to, uh, seeing how that might support us in, in engineering. Um, so, you know, we are going to face some really big challenges. And of course, California has been right in the front line of climate change. I know many of you, you, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, have suffered from the fires and are still still suffering uh, from them. So the world, we are in a new world where we are going to face huge numbers of challenges. And, uh, you know, we're going to have lots of solutions that we can apply, whether it's renewable energy, whether it's regenerative agriculture, um, which enables us to grow our food at the same time as building soils, supporting wildlife, um, absorbing carbon. Um, 
um, uh, you know, and rewilding, actually, you know, uh, bringing back wildlife, which will help regenerate the living systems on which we depend. And in fact, one of the best ways of reducing the amount of carbon uh, in the atmosphere is to repopulate our oceans with whales, with the, uh, the whales uh, pooping on the surface, uh, fertilizing the surface, uh, surface of the ocean so that algae can grow and as they grow, absorb uh, carbon dioxide. Um, so we've got a huge number of solutions. We just need to bring them together, see how they interconnect um, uh, so that we can regenerate the living systems uh, on, on which we depend. Uh, and I'd just like to finish with, you know, people say, well, what can I do? Do whatever you love to do. Study whichever subjects you love to study. Go into any profession um, you want to go into. So do what you love. Uh, but do it in a way which regenerates our planet. And that's the great mission for all of us alive today is to regenerate our planet. And it's so meaningful and, you know, it's going to be hugely important for us to do that. Um, you know, also to keep us psychologically and spiritually, you know, well um, through the, uh, the inevitable challenges that we're going to face in, in, in the coming years. So do what you love, but do it in a way which regenerates planet Earth. Great. I don't think there's a better way to end. Thank you so much, everyone, for I'm seeing lots of clapping. So <laughs> thank you so much, ambassadors, for joining us, um, giving us your time. Um, thank you so much, Poran and Sam, for joining us, too, and, and sharing your thoughts and helping us build this One Planet portfolio.